Welcome to the Re-Review Podcast, where we watch movies from our past with a perspective from today. Your hosts are Matt, Bobby, and Austin, and we have an immense love for the films of our youth, so we're taking a look back to see if they still hold up. On this episode, we're discussing Enemy of the State. It was released in 1998, directed by Tony Scott, and stars Will Smith, Gene Hackman, and John Voight. This movie tells the story of the government coming after an everyday civilian. Now, this is a fair warning. We're spoiling a 23-year-old movie, so if you haven't seen it, we will be revealing key plot points. This was my choice, so let's discuss. You know, back in 1998, way back when, uh, you know, seeing this film it, and knowing what has happened since, this movie was definitely very prescient for the eventual Snowden world that we would come to know, because this was what, X-Files time and and things like that, where government being big brother was really just the thing we all talked about and didn't really want to believe in, you know? And and this movie, I think, really played into those ideas that there's always someone watching, and here we are 23 years later, and it's extra confirmed that there's someone always watching, and more importantly, now we actually give all that information out freely, so now everyone's watching, family, friends, and, and the Gubby. So it's kind of a thing that we just landed on. So, you know, it... it at that time in 98, it definitely hit all of my love for the fiction of this and thinking of those ideas of, of having Big Brother. But I'm going to tell you right now, 23 years la- later, I don't like this film. I'm just going to say it. Wow. Didn't, didn't, uh, did not enjoy it. Um, you know, I, I'm someone who'd probably say they like Will Smith, but I found him insufferable. So maybe that meant he was doing a great job. But I found it so hard to root for that character at all. Uh, just every situation that he was placed in, I was like, can we just get rid of him? Like, I felt like there were probably better ways to make it, me care for the character. But I think we saw as we ran through the movie, there were so many things that we kept pointing out, like just issues from the technical aspect to just what they did with the story. Why was he a cheater? None of this really matters to me. So I'm going to start with that and we could talk about more stuff after. But Bobby, how did you feel about this film? Yeah, so I want to be a little bit more more optimistic than you are um, f- for the movie. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's it's not to say that it's a perfect film, but I mean, you know, and we can definitely talk about its faults. But I mean, I I enjoyed it. I mean, maybe Will Smith wasn't the perfect character, but I mean. I, I do find his persona and maybe his own persona bleeds into it for me, but I enjoyed watching it. And I mean, I think that there's, I mean, obviously some of the, some of the technology stuff kind of gets in the way of the movie, but I do think it's really interesting. And before I mentioned a little bit about the technology, I wanted to um, say one of the things I really liked about the movie, which is that it kind of has this really interesting like um like double cross situation at the end where he kind of like leads one set of villains to another set of villains and then kind of lets them like you know the mob group and the NSA group and kind of like lets them take care of each other which i think is a really interesting plot point for me like i, I think that i really haven't to my memory like seen that a whole lot in in movies and i think that's really interesting and um so by the end of the film, the thing at the end of the film is what got you. Yes, but it was a build up <laughs> from the beginning to the end. I mean, like, and I, I think it was interesting because like for a good half of it, it was like, okay, we have this, we have this tape and this tape is going to be the thing that takes everything down. And well, when they don't have it anymore, like, okay, like, oops, where do we go from here now? And I thought that was interesting as well. Um, I do also want to mention the time frame, 1998, and one thing that kind of stuck out of my mind about that time frame is that it was pretty close to Y2K, and I don't know if you um, you know like Y2K too much, but it was like basically like when you know everybody thought that you know like computers at the time were just going to crash and the infrastructure was going to fail, and I think at the time there was a bit of hesitancy and maybe even like paranoia and some people being scared about technology in general. So I really think that this movie kind of fed off of technology paranoia. I mean, in addition to, of course, like the government situation 
Well, at that time, I'd say that was a legitimate concern. Uh, Matt, you talked about the portrayal of hackers during this time, the way that technology people were presented in films in the 90s. And there was a lot of that here. How would you feel about it, Matt? Uh, hmm. That particular aspect of it, I mean, kind of like what I talked about back then is it's very rare for, especially during this time period, to get the hacker and surveillance state right in movies. I mean, that's, you know, you get the guys who look like they're, you know, they have hair gel, bleach blonde hair, you know, sitting there pounding away at a keyboard with this terribly designed Jurassic Park looking OS you know, that's allowing them hey, to hack into don't the- knock my favorite OS hey, design. Hey, How hey, dare hey, you? Hey, it's a Unix system. <laughs> I understand this. <laughs> but, you know, it, it never really comes off as believable. And I remember when this movie first started, I'm just looking at the cast of characters. I'm like, it's a very interesting cast of characters that they that they got for this, especially on the the NSA side of things. But none of them really look like they should really be in those positions for the most part, except for Voight. I mean, he's the one who looks like he belongs there. Everyone else looks really out of place, but it, it, that was the time period. That's how they Hollywood imagined those kind of people look like. And maybe to an extent they kind of did, but I, I would still think that once they hit the government, I mean, they would start looking a little bit more professional, a little bit more, you know, captain, you know, yeah, I'm sure there was Jack blacks, but I'm sure they at least wore, I don't know, a button up shirt or something. But okay, okay. well, I guess I'll pivot to. I mean, it was it was so centered around technology, right? And oh, so much even, so. Even back then, I think watching it, there was an element of giving into the fiction of the world because seeing them triple zoom enhance back in 1998, I was like, "This is BS. Like that doesn't oh, work like oh. that." So now this this much later, and these were the things that kind of were grating. Like, man, this just feels so false. Now, yeah. knowing how things are done, I literally wrote down for a movie so based in reality, there is like a, a massive amount of suspension of disbelief to watch this movie. Like, and that, like, I get it back in that time period because this is pre Matrix, pre like a lot of movies that kind of defined, you know, um, tech based movies or whatever. Um, there is just so BS, you know. I think, I think. If I were to walk out of a theater and I, like say say if I was a techie back then and old enough to really appreciate it, watching it in theaters, as soon as they did that little seventy five degree rotation around the security camera footage and the interpretation the interpolation of the bag or whatever, I would be like I'm out of here. This, this is just BS. This this is some Star Trek level stuff right now. But I mean, aren't we there today? Can't we do this in Unreal Engine? Can't we bounce some rays with some ray tracing and figure out what was I in can, the back? I can barely get my phone to 3D scan my face. Come on, man. That's got LiDAR. <laughs> All right. So maybe maybe we have another 20 years on it. Bobby, how'd you feel about the tech? I mean, I absolutely agree. I, I think, unfortunately, the reality of it for me is that the technology gets in, gets in the way of the storytelling. And I mean, I understand that Okay, like from a storytelling point of view, like the NSA had to figure out, like, okay, how do we follow them and wh- how do we get from point A to point B and all that kind of stuff? And I just felt like it was, it was a little bit, a little bit elaborate to try to, you know, like zoom in on the bag and do all this kind of stuff. Like, I feel like it was, I, I, yeah, I mean, the, 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 te- the technology of it just kind of got in the way of the story for me. And I feel like there's maybe a way that they can, they could have not used that and just. Do you, do you feel, I mean, part of me thinks they got too jargony, you know, they just kept trying to reinforce that. Oh, we're, we're cool government people doing cool stuff with tech. Well, they did. I remember reading the the production behind it where they actually did get some security analysts and stuff like that to actually like come in and kind of help them be as realistic as possible. But, you know, that obviously didn't happen. Um, I even think that he might've actually had a cameo when uh, uh, Will Smith and Gene Hackman were at the spy store. I think he was one, I think he was Steve uh, was, what was the, uh, was the guy who was, uh, you know, bringing in um, advice on stuff. Steve, not Bill. (laughs) Um, (laughs) 
but yeah, it's it, it it maybe it's the thing that movies do, right? They use tech to drive the story. It it does whatever it needs to do. It's just like superpowers sometimes. Whatever it needs to do, that's what it does. It's like the force. Whatever they want it to do, this movie to look cool or think, they do it. I wonder if like the thematic idea behind it was essentially the government's pulling in all these resources for something that's wrong to collect all this information that they shouldn't be doing. And like maybe having you think like, oh, okay, like they're using the very top of technology and the very top of what exists. And like, oh, wow, I didn't know that kind of stuff exists to kind of think of like, okay, like they're using all these resources to go after this. And it kind of reinforces the idea, okay, like, they really shouldn't be doing all this kind of stuff. It should be used for, you know, all their resources should be used for building roads and parks and infrastructure and that kind of stuff and not doing what they're doing. The whole theme of like, okay, like here's this bill that's going to get passed. Except for that fast forward to the end of the movie and you have your sleazy politician who they set up as, I don't, was he with his wife or was he with a different girl when they were? It was, I it was different. I think it was, was like his there, secretary but, or assistant or something. Yeah. Okay. So he's sleeping with a secretary. So he's not a good guy. And here he is at the end of the movie, essentially proclaiming, well, the bill's not dead, which is the usual, like, this is, we're going to figure this out and we're going to get it passed anyway. So I, I think that's the other thing that was kind of getting to me is how they set up these characters in a way that I, I don't, I mean, I guess the real world works like this. Not everybody's perfect. Yin and yang balance. People do good things and bad things, but I, I didn't find that I cared why Will Smith had to have had an affair with his ex in order to just create that one scene. Probably the scene that got me the most was him fighting with his wife. I was like, Oh, this is actually really intense up until that point. I was like, what is Will Smith's purpose? I think we talked about the way they bend his character from a, not as intelligent to getting intelligent to then taking his intelligence away at some point. And to be fair, it's not that he wasn't intelligent. He was obviously a very intelligent character, but as far as being savvy to this spy world, right? He, he, he was kind of naive to it. I mean, when his wife is supposedly more knowledgeable about that kind of stuff, whatever. And he kind of seemed like, Oh, what is that? I don't know what that is. I don't know what Bitcoin is, you know? Um, And then it kind of seemed like he was starting to kind of get it. You know, when he was kind of, you know, calling in the, you know, the police on the white van and everything. And it kind of seemed like he was getting the gist of it. And then by time him and Brill kind of started forming their plan, he just kind of seemed like he'd lost his way again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're right. I I don't know Bitcoin. So maybe I am. I am Will Swift. And, uh, you know, to kind of piggyback off what you're saying, I don't know. I don't know what they really wanted his character to be in this. Um, I I think I haven't said it when we were watching it. It felt like this movie was written for somebody else. Then they brought in Will Smith and Will Smith obviously brings a very specific character type. Well, okay. I backtrack that during this time period, he brought us very specific character type. Obviously he started getting to more dramatical roles as he went on post the two thousands. So, but during this time and that his heyday, the, you know, big Willie style time period, you know, he had a very specific character type and it, I don't know if his character was really that in the script. Mm. And so I think there was kind of a conflict there. I could feel that. I mean, they definitely tried to get some jokes in there for him and not going to lie. We watched the trailer and the trailer was basically lifting every good quote unquote comedy piece to sell this movie as, as a Will Smith film and not what it was, which was a much more dramatic tech involved government conspiracy theory type of movie. And it's strange too, because in a way it kind of felt like they tried to present uh, Will Smith's character um, as uh, the everyman type. And they kind of didn't give him that kind of position. Cause I mean, he was, it seemed like he's a pretty high end lawyer, went to Georgetown, you know, he's doing really well for himself. Not that that's a bad thing, um, but it doesn't necessarily put him in the position of an everyman, but it also doesn't necessarily put him in the, the um, situation of skill set. Like, you know how sometimes in movies um, they'll have somebody who might be good at technology or something, right? 
um, and that person will get involved. So, I mean, a more modern take on not this, but like the boys, for example, with Huey, um, you know, he doesn't necessarily have powers or, you know, gun experience or anything else, but he has some experience with technology and he has obviously a vendetta against, you know, the seven. And so there's a reason for his character to be there and to somewhat contribute. So obviously he contributes where he's hacking into the email and the, and, you know, going through the IP address and everything else. When it comes to, I think it was like drop claw or whatever her name was. Mm -hmm. Um, But it gave a reason for his character and they never really had that moment outside of his relationship with Rachel who had the connection with Brill. Like that seemed like that was about the end of it. He never Mm -hmm. really contributed anything past that. Um, which was kind of unfortunate because I think that's usually how you get somebody invested in the character and make you believe that they could actually kind of track along with it. The only thing that really tied that in is he rose. So I guess he's kind of athletic. So. Yeah. So you still didn't sell me. I understand everything you're saying, but I still didn't end up being so. So this was also kind of like an action movie, right? Uh, yeah, there was a lot wait, with, of... a, wait, with all the editing and jump cuts, I would think so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think I think maybe his like his like lawyer lawyering skills came into play, right? Like he was able to talk his way into some stuff and kind of like you know use those kind of non physical <laughs> verbal kind of skills to try to make some things happen. But right, it was a little bit of a jump. I mean, you mentioned the jump cuts. Was this a born film before born films? There was some shaky cam, especially at the end with the. So what happened sh- in the, the what happened in the tunnel? You guys were both Dutch. screaming. Oh, uh, Dutch Dutch no. angles. The Dutch angle means a. Uh, it's usually have your your traditional shot, which is uh, on a on a hor- on a flat horizontal plane, and a Dutch angle is when you tilt the angle of the shot up like oh 30 45 degrees and angle it it kind of like it's supposed to give like a psychological feeling of being off kilter a bit and there was a lot of those angled shots and every in this movie. shot yes every the whole shot. tunnel scene they were flipping and <laughs> like the, the cars kept just like rotating which side they were sitting on Oh, it hurts. But but there was still something about like the action element that I was like, okay, I, I do enjoy this a bit. And I mean, we talked about it being previous uh a uh, year before the Matrix and and just kind of that just type of stuff. I, I enjoyed the action bit of it. It's just everything that drove to it. I mean, it was the questions of wait, why is the car on fire? <laughs> like like things like that, where you're like, I, I get what they're doing, but I also don't get it simultaneously. I mean, I love that he blew up his building. After after Will's character uh, Robert made a uh, made a phone call, I was like, "Oh, that makes sense." Yeah, I, I liked all of that stuff. It just, you know, sometimes a film just doesn't hit you the same way twenty years later. Bobby, give me something else positive, please. I mean, I do think it's a pretty interesting idea. I mean, obviously, like, so there was. There was a conversation, which was uh, the same kind of idea, a movie in 1974, which also has Gene Hackman in it. So it was kind of an interesting play off of that, where in in 1974, it's kind of like, okay, like that movie was kind of had a similar vein of like, okay, like here's like a conspiracy theory against, you know, on like a governmental scale. And so... I do think that the that the story of it is very interesting. I mean, like you mentioned Snowden, and I do think that there's a lot of compelling aspects of a giant organization like the government, like trying to go against, you know, or like some entity of the government, like obviously it wasn't all of them because, you know, like there was that interesting one, like um, conference room scene where the one government guy is like, hey, look, if you guys are pulling on, if you guys are trying to do like some secret, you know, like unauthorized, unauthorized s- situation here, then, you know, you, you guys are going to pay the price. So, I mean, I do think there was a little bit of, you know, leverage there, but I mean, I, I, I think that, you know, like it's playing off of very common fears that, I think a lot of people have, and I think there's certainly story there. Well, now, now for sure. I think it, it definitely plays into it. Me, you know, back in the late nineties, for sure. There's probably like a little bit of it, but now that we know that the technology can actually do 
that kind of stuff and it's totally believable, then I do think that it definitely has that boogeyman feel to it, right? It definitely, maybe even more so now than back then is relevant. Um, obviously we have the, the hindsight that they didn't have when they made this, obviously nine 11 hadn't happened yet. A whole bunch of the, you know, Snowden hadn't happened yet. So there was a lot of stuff that you could almost say was, you know, prophesizing in a way. Um, and you know, it's almost a weird thing to say, but it might actually be a better movie today than it was back then. If it were made today, um, maybe with a different cast, maybe with a slightly different tone. Cause obviously there's a lot of things that don't quite work, you know, cause like we said at the beginning of this movie, all it would have been was upload to YouTube and Twitter and Instagram. There would be no running away with the, you know, a digital tape or a P2 card or whatever. We've talked about so today's tech ruins everything. All movies have to be done pre 1995 or something to make interesting things happen. But what's interesting is it's almost like technology is coming full circle, right? So now like, okay, like, yeah, you could upload it to YouTube, but then there's the other thing where it's like, okay, like, this is a doctored video. It's fake news, right? It's like deep faked. Like the guy was saying in the movie, oh, that isn't me. You know, well, now we've come to the point with technology where you can fake something like that. That is true. So that means he should have been live streaming. (laughs) <laughs> he was running away <laughs> at the beginning of the movie. The first thing he's got on, got on Facebook Live or whatever it is, and just started oh, no. live streaming to the world. Oh no! If they remake this, that he, he wouldn't be having a duck camera. He'd be a influencer live streaming in the park. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred for oh, sure, no, he would no. be. I don't, but I mean, no. the interesting thing is, is it is would it be the same kind of situation where it's the government like the NSA or would it be just some big corporation like nah, Facebook nah, or whatever nah. it, it would totally be the government I I mean I do like your corporation idea not going to lie Yeah but I mean that's just not they don't have they have they have power but they don't have you know they don't face I I assume Facebook doesn't have a bunch of dudes running around with AKs and you know Glocks and stuff like that <laughs> and hair gel galore. So I assume they don't have that. That's the I, one thing the government will have. So this is terrifying because there's a part of me that's thinking, well, we don't know. <laughs> the Zuck knows. Yeah, I mean that that's what's interesting about these kinds of movies is like it it really they take a it's kind of like, you know, the best lies have a little bit of truth in them. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like the idea behind that, where it's like, you can take something that's a little bit like, Oh, like I could totally believe this kind of idea and then run with it. And I mean, there's, there's so many different ways you can go with it. I mean, in a lot of ways, it could be a lot scarier than it actually, that than this movie actually was, you know, like it could be like, Oh, like this guy just happened to be a lawyer with this, other case you know that kind of oh there was a tape there too hey like you know like there was you know like it could be a lot scarier for just like a random guy who's not a lawyer who doesn't have all the assets like that who doesn't have a a like nsa contact to help Mm -hmm. him what if they did a prequel about brill like no when he ran or i don't know yeah exactly yes him telling us a little bit of story that we got of him at the you know dinner table because he needed to eat. What if we like got that fleshed out? I definitely think there's something there. Could be. Could be. No, those crickets means nope. It's not, <laughs> not happening. Don't do it. Okay, I'm gonna ask the question that I wanted, I really want the answer to from both of you. Is this a Christmas movie? It for sure is. I mean, okay. every time, every time they they went into a, it doesn't really feel like it. But every time they went into a store or a hotel or whatever, then they really had to blast the Christmas themes. Oh, if you all could see Matt's face, <laughs> this is diehard logic we're bringing here. I, it's the same level. It's the same level of people saying that Die Hard's a Christmas movie. To me, it all it, it would seem like one. I completely forgot that this was set during Christmas, even though that's actually more so than in Die Hard. It's actually an element as to the reason why some of the plot happens because mm-hmm. of the present and everything else. He wouldn't have been in the shop 
if it hadn't been for Christmas. But I guess in Die Hard's case, then there would have been a Christmas party. He wouldn't have been there. <laughs> but still, <laughs> still, it's not it's not Christmas movies. I will I will go to my grave. They're not Christmas movies. They take place during Christmas, but they're not a Christmas movie. Not a Christmas movie. I'm so sorry to do that to both of you. Yeah, it's it's tough. Uh, it was the first thing I thought, and then immediately I said, "No, this this doesn't this no die." Hard. I, I'm giving Die Hard a pass. Not this one. Definitely not this one. Until December happens every year, and I bring it up to you guys. Let's watch Enemy of the State. <laughs> I don't let's believe do you. it. I don't believe you will say that. <laughs> the way you started this whole thing off, saying that you were not entertained or you didn't enjoy it. Unless you're a masochist, I guess. But still, still. I think he does enjoy it. Maybe maybe that is the thing. So uh, any final thoughts on the film? Uh, Well, I'm, I guess I probably side a little bit more on the, on the Bobby side of things. Um, I did enjoy the movie. It doesn't hold up nearly as well. 20 some odd years later. Um, And I think it's mostly because of the acting and a few of the characters. Um, the idea of it, I think is fine. Um, the action, most of the action scenes are pretty good. Um, the choppy, it's very bad boys. It's very, it's very baytastic, right? There's bayhem in a lot of this stuff, but for the most part, it's, it's solid during the action scenes. And like I said, I'm very curious if they actually blew up that building for real. Like I'd be um, very interested to see it look like it, but yeah, it looked really good. But, um, so yeah, I, I think so it's pretty people good. People should watch it. 23 oh, years just, later wait for the remake oh, yeah, the, there you go there. Wait, wait wait for the remake bobby final thoughts and if people should pick this one up today i mean i i say yes i mean i think it's an interesting idea and i think it at least like for us it sparks a conversation an interesting conversation about surveillance in general and we didn't even get too deep into it but like privacy and like you know how far should the government go in order to like, and they kind of had the conversation about it a little bit. And in the beginning, you know, the husband and wife saying like, you know, like I'm not worried about it. I'm not trying to attack the government or whatever. And so I do, I do think that it, it has the potential to, you know, be a fun, interesting movie to watch and also have the added benefit of maybe having an interesting conversation afterwards. Fine. I'll be on my Island by myself saying, if you've seen it before, Remember, just keep it in your memories. It was probably fond. It's probably something that you, all the things we talked about, you could still say, oh, it's about government coming after you. Great. Keep it in your memory. Maybe you don't watch again if you've never seen it. I, I don't know. Maybe, I guess. Maybe do it based on their recommendation. Then come back to us. Tell us how you feel about it. During Christmas time. During Christmas, especially during Christmas time. Well, as always, thank you for listening. And remember, you're either incredibly smart or incredibly stupid.